She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. It's Wednesday, which means that we set this show apart for nothing but a spiritual focus. I believe that when our spiritual life is a mess, everything else seems to be a disaster also. Sometimes it feels like a tornado has touched down inside of our hearts or our minds or even our physical bodies. So we like to set apart on The Danny Johnson Show, we're here six days a week, we like to set apart at least just one show where we're going to have 100% focus on the best success book ever written. I don't know what you think the best success book ever written, but I guarantee you it isn't one of my books. (laughs) No way. The best success book on finances, on business, on your health, on your marriage, uh, parenting, dealing with everyday life's problems, dealing with people, which sometimes can drive us crazy, as well as the physical pain that maybe we start to endure as we get older, or even sometimes we're born with some of that stuff. The best book that has ever been written to really show us how to succeed in every area of life to pull us through some really hard times, to have us be the head and not the tail is the Bible. It's not a book that was written by man, but it was inspired by God to men and women where God inspired people with his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, with his promises about what he would bring for the future. He wrote this as like a personal owner's manual for you and I so that we could be able to traverse the difficulties of life as well as come out smelling like a rose as though nothing even scarred us. So today is going to be a little bit different. Usually I spend this first hour in a teaching, but today I'm actually having one of my friends from the East Coast that's joining me today. He is also a fellow radio talk show host, and I encourage you to listen to his show. Even though his show is around the same times as mine, is on on the weekends, but I will tell you that Daniel's show is a powerful show. His name is Daniel Fazina. I met him several years ago. In fact, I think it's almost five years ago that I was interviewed on his show where he had contacted us about my miraculous testimony. I had a healing. I was paralyzed uh, from the waist down, and God miraculously healed me. I also had a fatal heart condition in the year 2000, and God miraculously healed me. Both of these things are medically documented, and they are full-on, big-time miracles from the same God that parted the Red Sea, the same God of Israel that fed his children, uh, the children of Israel with manna fallen from the sky for 40 years and their sandals did not wear out. The same God who put his spirit on the prophet Elijah who raised the dead, as well as Elisha who also raised the dead. And not only that, but Elisha's bones after Elijah was buried and dead, like dead, dead (laughs) in the midst of some chaotic moment that happened in Israel. They literally took a man's body who died, put it, he just, they just ditched the body, just so happens, in Elijah's grave, and that man was restored back to life. A dead guy, okay? A dead guy who's, who lands on another dead guy who'd already been decomposed. I'm telling you, that kind of dead? He was long time dead, dusted, eaten, grody, bones sitting there in that grave. And yet the bones of Elijah raised a man from the dead. That same God that has a spirit, even on the dead man, the dead prophet, Elijah's bones was the same God that healed me in 2000. And then again in 2009. And so Daniel Fazina, he's a man that has a heart for the same God that you either don't serve or do, but I hope after today's show, you might choose to serve this God because there's no one more powerful, no one greater, nobody more faithful, no one who understands everything throughout the world except for the most high God, the God of Israel, who sent his awesome son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you and I to wash us, to cleanse us, to purify us, as well as to lead, guide, and govern us, that we would have a life that would draw more people unto us him, him being the Messiah. So anyway, we're going to talk about Daniel's latest book. So he's a radio talk show host, as well as he's an author. He just finished authoring his third book. This is, this book is available in stores as well as online. It is called Divine Intervention. Just after his show, Divine Intervention Radio, you can Google him, Divine Intervention. And this is the 50 true stories of God's miracles today. And that's all Daniel does. I mean, he, on his, on his radio show, he just interviews 
interviews these crazy, miraculous testimonies, and his book has impacted my life. Uh, it's kind of like this. It's almost like a supplement of the Bible because it shows that the Bible is still alive. When you hear these crazy stories, man, it makes you look at your own life and go, anything is possible. What am I worried about? Why am I worried about my debt? Why am I worried about my job? Why am I allowing fear and doubt and unbelief enter my spirit right now? This is stupid. Because the God of Israel, the God who set the foundations of this earth and and even had us in mind before the beginning of the foundations of the earth ever even began, he is still alive and he's active in everyday, average, ordinary people's lives every single day. So Daniel, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. People on the entire planet. So thank you so much for having me. I'm so sorry we didn't catch that. <laughs> Daniel, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Danny, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be with you, one of my most favorite people on the entire planet. Oh, that is really sweet of you to say. <laughs> that isn't what I thought you said, but that's really sweet of you. Daniel, I'm so excited to, to have you on our show. Um, this is actually being viewed via television and millions of people's homes uh, by cable television on UAN Network, as well as uh, on the radio and various different stations all over the country. And I'm really excited because this play is actually in secular, uh, radio stations, and this is not a place where people talk so much about miracles. There's a lot of people that believe in miracles that don't even believe in God. Um, in fact, I want you to talk to us about one story that I still can't ever forget. In your first book, in fact, you talked about this uh, this man who was not a believer. He didn't believe in God at all. He was a partier kind of a guy, and he had a boating accident. And in this boating accident, he came. He uh, almost died, and he was in a coma. How long was he in that coma for? Nearly six months. Right. Speaking of Fred Clem. Yep. Right. And he um, he actually uh, he's featured in my new book as well. A different version of the story. It's shorter. There are fifty stories in this in this book, right. and the previous two books had thirty three each. But yeah, Fred Clem is a guy I met at a Bible study back in two thousand, and I noticed he had a slight speech impediment, and uh, he had a big scar on his chest. Hmm. And I I know like from being in journalism, I'm very curious. So I know that generally speaking, big scars usually have awesome stories behind them. <laughs> so I asked him. <laughs> Hey, what's up with that scar? How did you get that? You know, and he proceeded to tell me about what had happened to him. He was driving a, a jet ski uh, in Long Island by Smith Point Beach, and he was going really fast, about 35, 40 miles an hour, he said, jumping wakes from passing fishing boats. And he jumped one wake, and he came down and hit a sandbar, and he sustained massive head trauma, was knocked unconscious. He's floating in the water for roughly 15 minutes before someone pulled him out. Wow. They helicoptered him to the hospital, and they were telling his family that, you know, he, he's probably not going to make it through the night. Mm. He was comatose on life support, and he surprisingly, he did make it through the night, and his, his family was being told he probably won't make it through the week. And again, he lived on, and then they said, well, he probably won't wake up, and if he does, he'll likely be brain damaged or paralyzed. So he continued in this state month after month, and all the while, you know, his family pretty much had no hope for him. Mm -hmm. And he told me the story that when he was in the coma, he said he thought it was a dream, but it wasn't a dream. He had a vision of Jesus Christ at the Last Supper with his apostles. And he and was not Jesus a believer. Up, this guy was not a believer, no, which is crazy. He to was me. an agnostic. <laughs> yeah, he knew who Jesus was from attending Catholic Church as a kid, yep. but he didn't really think about God. He was, all intents and purposes, an agnostic. He said, well, if there is a God and he's so forgiving, as everyone says, then he'll forgive me. That's about the extent of the thought he gave to God. Wow. But anyway, he saw Jesus in the vision, and Jesus got up, walked over to him, reached out his hand, and Fred reached up. And when Jesus touched his hand, that's when he awoke from this coma. He had been in for nearly six months. He was so confused, and he didn't know what to do. He panicked, started pulling out the feeding tube and everything else, and his body had atrophied so much for not, mm -hmm. from not moving for six mm -hmm. months that he couldn't stand. He was weak. He just kind of mm -hmm. hobbled out of the room, and it was 2.30 in the morning, and all the nurses came running over to him. They were all shocked to see him alive and awake. So they started to stabilize him, and, and he said he had to... He had to spend a full year in the hospital, Danny, learning how to, yep. to walk again, yep. how to eat again, how to yep. speak again. 
And he said he eventually started telling people about his vision and that he saw Jesus. And he said, I don't know if they believe me or not, because I didn't even believe in God at that point. But it's true. Jesus touched me, and that's when I woke up from the coma. (laughs) So today... Fred is a born again Christian, and he is, um, you know, he's he's well. He's working. He has a job and a car, and he's he has none of the conditions that the doctor said he would have. They they thought he would have to have anti seizure medicine for the rest of his life. Wow. He doesn't take that. He doesn't have brain damage. Um, he still has a slight speech impediment. But, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, yep. he's independent. Yep. It's amazing. It is. When I first read that story, I wept through it because I, you know, I was paralyzed, but only for two months. And so I understand the atrophy. And it took me a year to get my strength back as well. I can't imagine six months of atrophy, what that would do. Um, but that story, as well as so many other stories that are in this book, Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's mir- Miraculous, God's Miracles Today, this kind of book to me is a massive faith builder. And I believe that there's so many people, Daniel, that are struggling with some small problems that they've made into huge problems. And then there are some that are struggling with some mountainous, huge, impossible situations. And that's what I love about your books is that it feeds our faith that, my gosh, okay, so like when when I read that story, obviously I wept through it because I understood some of the pain this man had gone through, just a portion, because that, you know, I was paralyzed from the waist down. I didn't have the full head trauma and all that stuff. But to know that a man who was agnostic, and in that first story, you know, he he was a drinker, he was a partier, you know, he, he, he was mm-hmm. just living life to the fullest, never even thinking about tomorrow, and never thinking right. about consequences, wasn't responsible for for anything and for 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 God's mercy to reach to this man when no human could no human could reach into his mind and come into his conscious or subconscious mind as he was in a coma and here Jesus visited him that gives me so much hope no matter how many mistakes i've made no matter how many places i've been that i'm not proud of things that i've said that i'm not proud of that goes to show you his mercy is new every morning and that he really does love the atheist. He loves the agnostic. He loves those that even hate him. When we continue, we're going to dig more into this book and these stories with Daniel Fazina. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue after this. Stay right here for more of The Danny Johnson Show. Did you know you can take The Danny Johnson Show with you wherever you go? It's never been easier to stay up to date with the latest content from Danny with the DannyJohnson.com app. Watch or listen in the car, at the gym, or on the go. Download it now from the App Store and Google Play and never miss a show again. Your family, business, and bank account will thank you. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider member today and get on the fast track to success. Now, more of the Danny Johnson Show. Do you need a shot of hope? I mean, like an IV of hope 
in your veins. I know from time to time as we jump through the different seasons of life, and sometimes those seasons feel like it's one hoop filled with fire after another. If you're in that place today, I'm so glad that you tuned in to The Danny Johnson Show, especially today being a Wednesday as it is the spiritual equipping broadcast where we really focus on truth and hope and faith. We also focus on miracles, which today this show is completely set apart for miracles. And all coming from my friend Daniel Fazina. He is also a radio talk show host. He has a show called Divine Intervention Radio. And Daniel has written three books now. His latest book, Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today. He literally just interviews people who have the craziest, wildest, most unbelievable testimonies about how God has touched and healed their physical bodies, their minds, you name it. The same God that parted the Red Sea is alive today, and today's show is going to prove that to you. Daniel, um, first of all, how in the world did you encounter your very first miraculous testimony that you heard? The very first? Oh, gosh, I can't even remember. Um, But I can tell you about the ones I've experienced, the ones that really propelled me into this ministry, if you want to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I actually had two miraculous healings of my own Mm -hmm. that kind of spurred me into interviewing others who've had miracles. Uh, The first was chronic back pain. You know, Mm -hmm. I just, when I was 16 years old, I developed pain in my lower back that was uh, just constant. It was there whether I sat or stood for any length of time. And I went to go get it checked out and the x-rays came back and the doctor, chiropractor said, well, it's a congenital anomaly where my uh, lower sacral bone was partially fused to my hip bone. So as I grew and developed, it tore the cartilage ring, and a disc was bulging out and pressing against a nerve and was causing the pain. So I had um, physical therapy and chiropractic for a bunch of years, and nothing was really working, and I stopped therapy several years in. I just figured I'd have to live with the pain the rest of my life. Mm. So fast forward to 2001. This is 10 years later now. I went on a men's retreat with some guys from my church, And we were at Montauk Point and Montauk Manor, and there was about 40 guys in this hotel meeting room, and they said, we're going to dedicate this afternoon to prayer to Jesus for physical healing. (laughs) So if you have any any issues, come to the front of the room. We'll pray for you. So, Danny, I'm online to go to the front of the room. There's all these guys praying for each other at the front. And my friend Dave is online next to me. He says, Daniel, what are you going to ask for prayer for? And I said, well, my back, because I've had this problem all these years. And right then, Danny, the pain disappeared, (laughs) gone. I was bending and twisting, and it was just gone. And I believe that was an atmosphere of healing. The Holy Spirit was there. No one even prayed for me at that point. No one laid hands on me. And I just, I believe that God chose that moment to answer that prayer. So I would know it was him and not doctors or therapy or anything Or the guy that was praying for you, right? Or the guy, you know what I mean? The one anointed person that was laying hands on you, literally, (laughs) right? Because we do, Daniel, we do. I've been, I was that person. You know, you go to different evangelistic meetings or healing crusades or whatever, and and you you just like, if only that one prophetic guy or that guy that has that healing ministry, if only he would pray for you. I don't want anyone else to pray for me. I just want that guy to do it. And we put our faith in the human (laughs) instead of the Holy Spirit spirit that is in the space is already in the room already there and look i love that that's your right. testimony that all you did was confess it i'm gonna ask god to heal my back i've had this problem for all these years and you felt that pain yeah. leave years. your body that's that's amazing that's absolutely yeah. amazing I, I i i can only imagine actually i can't imagine i know what it felt like for you, <laughs> you know. to bend down the first time with no pain Oh, gosh. Just, it was amazing. Yeah. I, I stand here today pain-free, and, you know, this was 2001, so this is like 12 years or so. 13, and just yeah. After having pain every day from 91 to 2001. So wow. that was the first thing that really took my faith ahead. And then the following year, 2002, I was diagnosed with cancer, and I had a massive tumor in my chest the size of my heart. It was grapefruit-sized, and it was a lymphatic tumor. They said, um, you know, it's... We're not sure if it's going to respond to treatment. We'll give you, you know, chemo, but it's inoperable. 
Um, but they said if it doesn't respond, you'll be dead within three weeks to three months. Hold on, hold on one second here. Okay, so wait. So you suffer from this back pain for, since you're 16, so it's 10 years of suffering this back pain. In the moment you say, I'm going to ask God to heal my back, you get healed. A year later, you get cancer? Okay, now hold on one second here. Yeah. <laughs> this is life. Yeah. This is life. Yeah. Is it not? It is life. We could, we go through these. I actually, a couple weeks ago, taught on this, that we, we, you know, we hit this mountaintop and things seem to be great, and then bam. Just like the woman, right, when Elijah came to the woman who uh, it was during the time of the famine and the Lord sent her, her him there and he says, I'm sending you to this widow that's going to take care of you. OK, she she eats now, but her son dies. You know, so it's like, what? You know, what a roller coaster ride. When we continue with Daniel Fazina and his book, Divine Intervention, uh, we're going to hear more about what happened to the cancer. How did this work itself out? This is Danny Johnson. What multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Prior to Danny Johnson, I was struggling in my business. I was drowning in debt. Me and Crystal weren't doing so well either. In the last 21 months since our first event, um, I paid off $36,000. Uh, we actually got engaged, which was the best part, and my business made $90,000 last year. And I've given over $5,000 to orphans this year as well. So I can tell you that this has changed my life, but I want to recommend that you come to this event and learn as much as you can from Danny Johnson. Um, I attended a First Steps to Success event and um, um, after the skills I learned there, I started a home business. I've made over five figures in one month. Actually, I've generated over $90,000, which is way more than I ever did working full-time at my other job. Um, so we have increased our income, paid off debt. Um, you know, more than that, though, we no longer have that pressure. It's just been such a blessing to my family. So, you know, everything might be awesome in your life, but if you want to increase your income, pay off debt. Um, improve relationships, live the life you've always wanted to live, I suggest you get to dannyjohnson.com and register for the next event. After plugging into Danny Johnson, we made a covenant that we would either move forward together or we would go our separate ways. And in a matter of days, we sold his car, we bought our engagement ring. Um, five months later, we were married, we paid for our wedding in cash because of the business skills that we had also learned from Danny. And we've since then quadrupled, more than quadrupled our income. And um, we've been together now married for over a year. And after pl plugging into Danny Johnson, we have paid off $196,000 in 13 months. My company has grown 90% and I have relationships that I could never have even imagined with the ones I care most about around me. So Prior to attending my first steps to success, we were drowning in debt. We had lost a business. My marriage, my second marriage was going down the toilets. I had no time in relationship with my son um, and I was just a mess and I was burning out fast. After attending First Steps and been to a few events, we have a thriving business that's gone international. We have paid off 65% of our debt. We are not just making money, but we're saving money and we're learning how to grow money. I have got a marriage that's gone from barely surviving to thriving, and I now have two children uh, with whom I have so much time. I am not burnt out, stressed out, and all I can say is you've just got to get here. We're back. Here's Danny Johnson. Been on a roller coaster ride where, man, something awesome happens. You know, the 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 world of, of Christians in the church call it, I had a breakthrough, you know, and you're on cloud nine. You're just like showering in this great blessing. Everything seems awesome. Everybody's acting right. <laughs> you and your spouse are actually in love again. Your kids are saying, yes, ma'am, no, sir. Right? Every Everyone's acting right. You're not getting, you're not having people wave with one finger on the freeway anymore with you. You know, the boss is good, the finances are good, and then bam, you get diagnosed with cancer. Well, this is a similar place that my friend Daniel Fazina found himself in. He's the author of now his third book, 
Divine Intervention. Yes, he's also the radio talk show host of Divine Intervention Radio, where he, as a journalist, uncovers miraculous testimonies. And we're hearing how in the world did he ever start off in, in wanting to find people that had miraculous testimonies and to be able to write books about it, as well as interviewing these people live. So Daniel's back with me. So again, you, you, you got healed of, of this back problem. That was medically documented a serious problem. I mean, you had a serious, serious back problem. This wasn't like, oh, my, my, you know, sciatic nerve is just being pinched. No, you were like deformed. You were born deformed in your back. And as you grew older, it was a bigger deformity. <laughs> Sorry to say it like that, but that's what it is. Anyway, so, so Daniel, then a year after you, you have no back pain, you get diagnosed with terminal cancer. What were you feeling in that moment when the doctor said this to you? When he said that it could kill me within three weeks to three months, it was surreal. I was feeling a mixture of shock and numbness and just disbelief. You know, I was 27 years old. I'd never been seriously ill before. It just came out of nowhere, and it was so shocking. I mean, what do you do with with a prognosis like that? It was just it's devastating, you know. Um, it took me a while to process it, so I was definitely numb for a while there. Were you married at the uh, time? You know, and they said... No, I was not, but uh, so a single guy. My wife Sahani, we were we my Sahani and I were dating at the time. She was a med student. Wow. Or just prior to entering medical school. Wow. Wow. But uh, yeah, she was with me through the whole thing, and um, it's a good you know one. I, you know what's really surreal is that I had started an exhaustive study of alternative cancer therapies and and the alternative cancer treatment industry and that whole. Um, industry just because I thought it was interesting. I was fascinated with it and I had no idea I was ill. I think God was leading me and just preparing me for this. So I start this study and then about six months later I get this diagnosis and it was just like I was starring in an episode of The Twilight Zone. It was really crazy. So, you know, they, they're saying, well, we'll give you treatment. We're not sure if it's going to respond. But again, if it doesn't respond, you'll be dead within weeks to a few months at the most. And Danny, I hit this thing with everything I knew how to. I had yep. intravenous vitamins and minerals. I had yep. laetrile, acupuncture, uh, physical therapy, massage, mm. you name it. I did everything I knew how to. And they were going to give me six rounds of chemo once a month. And they were going to take a halfway point scan three months in to gauge the process or mm. the progress. They were hoping the tumor would be smaller. Now, Throughout all this, I also had people praying for me, a lot of people yep. praying for me, anointing me with oil, telling me yes. this thing was born to die. It's going to be a testimony to Amen. the Lord. Amen. And I took that. I received that. There was one instance, though, where I was in my hospital bed, literally dying. This thing was so big, it was crushing my pulmonary artery and literally uh, suffocating me. I wasn't getting enough oxygen. And I remember looking up to the ceiling and just I was at a point of utter brokenness before mm. God. I said, you know what, God? Mm. I know I'm your child. If you want to take me, I will go with you. Because the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Amen. Lord. And I believe that. And I also said, Lord, if you want to heal me and let me live, I will do my best to continue to serve you and to share with the world your goodness and your grace, your love, your mercy, your power. And Danny, I was just totally broken, throwing myself on God's God's mercy. It was out of my hands. You know, yeah. what else could I do? Yeah. So three months you know, in, they take this halfway point scan, and not only did it come back smaller, the tumor was completely gone, came back negative. No more cancer in my body, no more tumor, nothing. Wow. I remember walking out of the radiology place, holding the scans, <laughs> and just looking up to the heavens, I had tears streaming down my eyes and my face, and I just, it was just a clear, crystal clear blue sky day right before Christmas yeah. and just thanking him. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank yes. You. Yes. Yes. It was the best Christmas gift I ever received. No question. And you know what's so powerful about, there's so much that you said that is powerful, but Daniel, I know that I've seen so many people throughout their lives from mine and even what you just said is when we surrender wholly our will to him, when we reach that point where we've exhausted all of our options. And what's so sad is that we have to somehow exhaust all of our options before we surrender. And what I'm trying to practice in my life yeah. today is to surrender way before I've put up a fight, to surrender way before I've I've exhausted all my options, to surrender way before I've, I've thought everything through and, and tried to come up with the best possible solution. None of that works. But when we fully mm. surrender ourselves to Him— 
and we cry out and we realize that our next breath is only a gift. That's the facts. That our life is nothing but a gift. And he's the one that determines whether or not we get this next breath or we don't. And when you are confident that you know where you will be if this last breath was yours, as you were, Daniel, you were confident. You knew exactly who you would be with. You knew exactly whose arms you'd be in. And you knew the safety of who he is. And there's a great comfort, a great confidence that comes, a great security that comes when you know your Savior like that. You see, there's lots of people who say they know him. But at the same time, if they were to be asked this question, are you a thousand percent sure that you know exactly where you would go if this was your last breath? Most people who go to church every day cannot say, yes, emphatically, I know I will be with my Jesus. Most people can't say that. I've seen it by tens of thousands of people when we've been at First Steps to Success, those that come forward to receive Christ on our Saturday night spiritual equipping. It's, it's shocking to me how many will say, I'm a believer, but they cannot say, yes, I know emphatically where I would go. And so you knew that answer. Yeah, I can relate you, to that. Yeah. Well, you yeah, knew the answer to that question. Always. Did you say I you did didn't always? Point. Yep. No, I didn't always. I mean, I was raised in the church. You know, and I went to Lutheran church every every week as a kid, and I always believed in God and prayed to Him. I prayed the Our Father, and now I lay me down to sleep before I went to sleep every night. But there was this nagging question in the back of my mind because I knew I wasn't good enough for God, and <laughs> the, the thought of dying and, and going to hell scared me. And sometimes even it would keep me awake at night. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until my brother asked me point, point blank, if you were to die today, Daniel, are you sure you'd go to heaven? I had to say, well, no, I'm really not. And that's when he took the Bible and he started showing me scriptures about, you know, what I needed to do. Just ask Jesus into my life, repent of my sins, and trust him, trust the work that he had done on the cross for dying for my sins. And when I did that and, and, and made that profession, um, the fear of death left me from that point. And I really started to grow and live with a sense of God's calling in my life. Mm-hmm. So you don't automatically get it just because you go to church. You know, there's, yep. you've heard the expression, you know, just because you stand in a garage, that doesn't make you a car. You know, it's the same thing. <laughs> I've just never because heard you that. go to church. <laughs> oh, no. That's just awesome. because you go to church doesn't mean you're a Christian. That's right. You know? That's right. And so once I really made that commitment and it made Jesus the Lord of my life and, and asked him in personally, that's when the fear of death left me. And that point in the hospital bed where I was, I mean, what you were saying about surrender yes. is so awesome because once you do surrender, you get God's peace. You do. That, that passes all understanding that yes. the Bible talks about, the, the peace that the world can't give and the world can't take away. I experienced that yep. through yep. my illness just because I surrendered. And it was so difficult for me to see, like, my parents and friends, everybody crying around me and just very sad, but I was at peace. Yeah. And I can't, under- I can't explain it other no. than... It's just the peace that Jesus can give. Yeah, and it's the peace that passes all understanding. And that's just so true because when you do surrender, and and, and see, this is the thing. It takes a lot for most of us to surrender. Uh, It's sad, Mm -hmm. but it's true. And so it seems that we humans much rather wrestle about our debt or we must wrestle and worry and work ourselves up into anxiety and frenzies and antidepressant drugs before we just go, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And I thank you for forgiving me for the financial mistakes that I made. Because if that's what somebody's wrestling with, right? They they're wrestling, they're worried, they're fearful, they're 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 anxious. They they got all of this angst inside of them and the frustration level is high and and they they've got no peace, they've got no patience inside of them. And that simply is because they haven't surrendered. Surrendered to his will. He says that he will provide for us, and we have to trust that. And we gotta work every day as though we know he will provide for us, that he sees what we do. And, and same with our health and same with the, the problems inside of our relationships with at home as well as the relationships at work. So I, I hope that just hearing Daniel's testimony right now here today answers something in you. And in this last segment, we're talking about surrendering. Surrender to the one that loves you, the one that cares for you the one that is for you and not against you. We'll continue with more with author and radio show host, 
of the show Divine Intervention, Daniel Fazina, right after this. Helping you become all you were meant to be. This is The Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. So um, four years ago in July, we showed up to our first Danny Johnson event, our first first steps to success. And we were completely desperate in every area of our life. At the time, I thought it was just because of our finances, but then I figured out pretty quickly that it was because of my lack of people skills that we were where we were. Um, we, we sat in the front row. We got fr um, fast track. We sat in the front row, right in the center, next to some amazing people, because we, um, we were so hungry, so desperate so broken and I pretty much cried through the entire event, honestly. And um, when she did the, the war on debt, um, which she will show you, you know, this afternoon, I went back immediately and got it. Um, she had just started talking. I heard a couple of stories and I was like, if they can do it, I know we can do it. So we went back and got it and listened to it on the way home in the car because we drove from Michigan all the way to um, to Missouri. So we listened to it in the car, and when we got home, we immediately got our papers out, we wrote down our plan, and we started applying it. And within 14 months, we paid off over $62,000 worth of debt. Um, we never in a million years thought that was possible. Um, there's so much that has happened in the last four years, and um, I'm the person that wants the results immediately. I don't like the process of getting there. I want to just get there. But I've learned to appreciate the process um, over the last four years and just seeing the transformation that has happened in us. Uh, personally, we, we individually experienced different things and we experienced a lot of things together. I was paying our bills. I was um, completely disrespectful to my husband and didn't really know how bad it actually was. And. Um, so that, has, that part of our life is still improving. I can say we're a work in progress. It takes time, and we have grown so much. Uh, we showed up. My wife, I didn't know this at the time, but she was battling thoughts of suicide. I had no idea. Um, I thought I was being a perfectly good husband. I did my best to serve her, you know, be a great guy. But what she needed was somebody who would step up and be a leader in our marriage. That's not who I was. And I was totally emasculated physically emasculated by there's someone in our church, the pastor, and so we felt the brokenness of a church having to leave and just hurt, you know, and devastated. Um, one of the biggest breakthroughs started in our marriage is when Lucy started being a wife to me. And I, as a leader, I should step up right, take action first, be the initiator. She did it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a completely different person. And I can tell you, our marriage has just, it's, it's amazing the difference between her feeling suicidal, me stepping down as a leader, to me taking the initiative and just looking her in the eyes and saying, honey, thank you for allowing me to be your leader. And she just melts every time. This is awesome. So. <laughs> So let me just tell you this, guys. If you're struggling, or you're broke, you're wondering what your next step is, hey, just take action. Write, follow those notes that you just took. Take action and do it because your story is going to be here. And people are going to be inspired by your story. So are you all ready to take notes? All right, let's do this. Help me welcome Miss Danny Johnson, America's favorite millionaire, to the stage.
get ready to live the uncommon life. Here's Danny Johnson. I don't know if you're in a broken place or you are on a mountaintop right now. Whatever it is that my face and voice is finding you at at this very moment, this next few minutes is going to bless you. If you think you're at the top, you're about to go higher. If you think you're broken and at the bottom and you just feel like you want to die, we're going to get you out of that pit. And actually, it's not a human that's going to get you out of this pit. It's actually the God that we serve that's going to get you out of this pit. Joining me today, author and radio show host, Daniel Fazina. His show is Divine Intervention Radio. His book, Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today. Daniel has had a blessing of being miraculously healed twice, once from cancer, once from a deformity in his back. He also has witnessed, man, Daniel, how many miraculous testimonies have you heard from the line of work that you're doing today? <laughs> oh, it's such a blessing. I get to talk with people on a regular basis. I've done over 180 uh, radio interviews and many more I've heard you know, from people submitting stories to me and things like that. And it's amazing because God seems to connect me with people in strange places wherever I go that have amazing miracle stories, whether I'm at church or at the store or they're recommended through friends, work, whatever. But uh, it just seems like these people find me, God directs them to me, and it's just uh, it's so encouraging. It really, um, I just I love what I do, and it's such an honor and a privilege to be able to share God's miracles with a hurting, broken world that's really in need of encouragement. It really is. Can you share one more? Like, I mean, because it's 180 miraculous testimonies that you've interviewed on your radio show, but then there's hundreds more of that you've read. What one stands out? Because I know it's got to be difficult to pick one out of that large number, but what's <laughs> one that you could share in a couple of minutes that has really impacted you? Yeah, sure. One of the uh, amazing stories that stands out to me that I included in Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today, is that of Emma McKinley, from Rochester, Minnesota. Now, Emma was in a workplace accident back in 1993. She was working at a department store, and she climbed up to get some boxes in a loft, and a heat vent kicked in, and the heat overtook her, and she fainted, and she fell back, And um, but her, her leg was caught between some boxes and boards, so she actually hung upside down unconscious as her, her head uh, hit some boards and stuff. So she was hanging like that for several hours before a coworker found her and brought her to the uh, hospital. So she woke up and she was she had a concussion and she lost part of her hearing. Very confused. Um, after about a month, her uh, her leg healed, but then she developed what they call uh, RSD, which is a reflex sympathetic disorder, mm -hmm. and it's a very painful condition. She said it's like your your nerves and your joints are inflamed with pain. It's like you're plugged into a, an electric outlet Aye. and very, very painful. I asked her, you know, on a scale of one to 10, the doctors ask you what your pain level is. She said with RSD, it's off the charts, about a 15. And so she was like this and she had, you know, I think she said 2000 milligrams of morphine per day, mm. 23 different kinds of medic medication. Uh, it paralyzed her, her left side. She had a club hand and her foot was twisted. So she's in a wheelchair living like this for over a decade, 15, 16, 17 years, something like that. And she always believed in the Lord. She always, um, you know, prayed. And she said, I partnered with God every day. I needed him even more after the accident. And she couldn't get to church a lot. But when she could, she just she went to services, but she persisted in prayer and praise. And she would she actually was hanging over the left side of her wheelchair in this weird twisted uh, position. And uh, she was like that for many, many years. She went to the Mayo Clinic. They were very familiar with her case there in, in Rochester, Minnesota. So fast forward to 2011, Christmas Eve morning. She's up at her computer uh, at around 1 o'clock in the morning because she couldn't, she couldn't really sleep. She was uh, in pain so often she would be awake for 70 hours at a time, and then her Gosh. body would just shut down for three hours. And then that's how she lived for all these years. So she's at her computer, and she went to turn her wheelchair, and it tipped over, and it dumped her out on her left side, and she was twisted, and she was just in excruciating pain. She's crying out to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sure. For hours, she said she felt like either God was going to come and help her or God was going to take her home that <laughs> night. So 
she's crying out to Jesus, and she said she saw Jesus. Jesus appeared to her after, you know, seven or eight hours, and he he literally straightened out her spine and her foot and her hand. She watched her club hand open that hadn't opened in, in a decade, watched the raw flesh grow back on her hand, and she was able to stand up and walk for the first time in over a decade. She walked out of there. Her sons, her two sons, came for Christmas Eve morning. They were dumbfounded. Yeah. They they saw the wheelchair in the hallway, and then they saw Mama walking. <laughs> the grandson had never known anything but crooked Grandma in the wheelchair. <laughs> they were flabbergasted, and she got her mobility back. And she sent me before and after pictures of her uh, before and in the wheelchair, and then afterwards she wow. sent me medical documentation from wow. Mayo Clinic wow. where the doctors admitted that she had an extraordinary recovery on Christmas Eve. Uh, they couldn't explain it. And she is now uh, on fire for the Lord. She goes around, she's sharing her testimony. It's gone around the world, and she's encouraging people with uh, her faith in the Lord. It reminds me of the scripture in um, in the Gospels where there's a woman who is who was crooked and couldn't raise herself up, and she was like that for like 17 years until Jesus touched her. Kind of like the same thing with Emma. Uh, it's just... <laughs> An amazing, fascinating story. Wow. And because he really is yeah. alive, and he really is yeah. the same today, yesterday, and forever. He really, really loves you. He loves yeah. Emma. He loves, he loves you who are watching or listening. He loves you, and he cares for you. Now, isn't it so interesting that Emma, through all that decade of living at this crooked, with this crooked body— still chose to love God, still chose to worship him, still chose to call on his name. And she chose for seven to eight hours as she's in pain on the floor and no one to help her. She cried out to the one she knew who could help her and he healed her. He healed her. He can heal you. He can heal your children He can heal your finances. He can heal your business. He can heal every single area of your life. The question I have for you is, will you call out to him with that kind of commitment that Emma did? Fully surrendered in his arms, saying, I need your help. And she persisted. So often we might throw up one little short prayer and that's about it. But Emma continued. He is ready and available to heal. And he'll go all in if you're all in on the miracle you need. Daniel Fazina, I thank you so much for sharing these stories with us today. The book, again, is Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today. Where can they find this book? Where can they find you, Daniel? Where can they find the book? DivineInterventionRadio.com. DivineInterventionRadio.com. They can listen to the radio archives and hear Emma and other people tell their stories in in their own words. They do a lot better job of it than I can. (laughs) And, of course, the book is uh, readily available there as well. DivineInterventionRadio.com. DivineInterventionRadio.com. Go get your copy now. This is Danny Johnson. We're going to continue with Hour 2 of The Danny Johnson Show right after this. Helping you become all you were meant to be. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. 
Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an insider member today and get on the fast track to success. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Get ready to live the uncommon life. Here's Danny Johnson. Come on now, sometimes we are living a certain way in our life that we know is not right. And yet, we expect to be blessed by God. Come on now. You got to stop doing that and you got to stop thinking that way. If you want a blessing, it's time to shore up the things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, yeah. And he will bless you. He will. And he gives all, 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 all grace and mercy and all of that wonderful stuff and love. As long as we turn from our wicked ways, please forgive me. And if you're sleeping with somebody that you're not married to, you know you ain't supposed to be doing that. And if you are addicted to pornography, you know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Don't expect God to bless your finances. If you've got this addiction of committing adultery on your spouse, and that goes for the women and the men, because men and women today are addicted to pornography. So you, you cannot expect for God to bless everything if you are not walking wholeheartedly with Him. Hmm. Huh. I know I made you mad. Oh, well. Anyway, going over to the phones, I've got Michelle from Kansas City, Kansas. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Hi, Danny. Thank you. Yes. I wanted to say uh, first, thank you. After plugging in, I paid off $43,000 in debt, and I owe no man. So thank you for that, and praise God. <laughs> and the reason I called today is because I have a great friend. And, um, and we're not sleeping together since the last segment was so bold. Uh, but he is a good friend, and he doesn't he doesn't know the Lord. Okay. And I, I just want to pray for his salvation. His name yes. is Ali. Yes. So is this a friend, Michelle, that you are dating? No, ma'am. Okay, good job. He's a customer <laughs> at my restaurant, and he's, he's just a friend. Oh, I'm so interesting and I like him, but it bothers me that he doesn't know the Lord. I number one, I first of all, I got so many things I want to say to you right now, Michelle. Number one, congratulations on paying off that forty eight thousand dollars worth of debt and no longer being a slave to debt, being a bond slave. Girl, I'm proud of you. And do you know that makes you quite quite are you single? I am. Whew, that makes you one hot commodity out there, girlfriend. <laughs> that makes you that makes you somebody, honey. That makes you somebody. Number two, I'm so proud of you that you can know a guy and not sleep with him. You're doing so much better than I did when I was young. <laughs> I was a you terrible person. I'm doing better than I did when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I'm proud of you. I'm really, really, really proud of you. And number three, that you care about the salvation of a customer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Girlfriend, I don't know if you realize it, but that's a sure sign of someone that's got a little bit of an evangelistic gift inside of her. You care about the salvation of a non-family member? A customer that comes into your restaurant? Ooh, I'm about to go yeah. hog wild with this prayer. Father, I thank you so much for Michelle. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the $48,000 worth of debt that she learned to pay off. I thank you, Father God, that she heard the message of becoming financially responsible. I thank you, Father God, that she has been able to dedicate and devote her life to you as well as her physical body. And in doing so, Lord, she's keeping herself pure, that she is not giving her body over to somebody that is not her husband. So Lord, I pray that you have that you bring a breakthrough even in that area, that God, whoever this future husband might be, that Father, that he will behold this beautiful bride and cherish this debt-free woman who has recommitted her life to you, who has made herself pure before you, and that has a heart for the salvation of strangers. God, I thank you for the gifting that is on this young woman's life. I thank you, Lord God, for the heart that 
that you've given her. And we pray for this man as well as everybody else that is around Michelle. Because there are many that are around her that don't know you. But Father, I pray for the right words, the right seed. And God, I thank you that this man, what's his name, by the way? Ali Fatalahi. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ali. Ali. Okay. So, Father, I thank you for Ali. Yes. And God, you know right where he is. You know what he looks like. You know what's in his mind. And Father, I thank you that you have brought Michelle into his life. And she is the walking, living, talking version of the Bible. That she right now, she is that living, walking, talking version of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that Father, I pray that she does not use the words that maybe so many have used that have just fallen on on, on dead ground. But that God, that she speaks with love with kindness because lord your word says that it is your kindness that brings us to repentance yes that it is your kindness that brings us to repentance so lord anoint my sister's mouth every day at work so that she encounters all kinds of people and she drips on them your love your spirit upon all of those that she's serving every single day not only at work but every place that she goes god i anoint this young woman and i call out this this uh, spirit of evangelism that is on her life that she cares about salvation of others father i i ask that you fan that fire, that flame, Lord God, and give her the courage even to pray for people, to ask that she could have permission to pray for people, even in that restaurant, that that even at that time outside of that restaurant, she says, you know, know, I've been been praying for you. Can I just pray for you right now? You know, it's just a blessing. And Lord, she goes to town. She goes to town, she goes to town, she goes to town. Even, Lord, as she plans to fly in airplanes, as she's praying over cities, as she's driving to work, she's praying over the city in which she lives in. God, pray. I I ask that you anoint those prayers, that you fan this fire of evangelism that she has upon her life and open doors that no man can shut. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing inside of her. In Jesus' name, amen. Girl, I led, amen. A, I led a waitress to Christ in a bathroom stall <laughs> in Los Angeles, California. I see you doing that. I led a Jew to Christ on an airplane landing in Belize. I see you doing that. And that's where it all starts. It's starting with whoever it is around you. God gives you that heart for that person. As you continue to pray like that, he's going to give you many, 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 many more that uh, you're going to lead to him. And remember, Michelle, you are the Bible to Ali. You are the gospel to him. So you bring that love, that kindness, that grace, that mercy, and he's going to feel it. And that is going to, what's going to cause him to see the Lord because he sees the Lord in you. I am so proud of you. Oh my gosh, Michelle. I just want to hug your face. Thank you, Danny. All right. God bless you. Thanks so much. I hug you too. I love you. (laughs) Thank you. God bless you. Bye. All right. Well, we've got a couple more people that are on the phone. Unfortunately, we've completely run out of time. So, Father, I thank you for Conquesta and Jean. Lord, you know their their job situation, the husband situation, the finance situation. You know exactly, Lord God, what to do. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and there's nothing too difficult for you. So, Holy Spirit, I pray you go to where they're at right now. Touch their hearts. Give them faith. Open doors, Lord God, that no man can shut, and show yourself to be strong inside of their lives, and that they would testify from the mountaintops of your goodness and how you worked it all out. In Jesus' name, amen. So, hey, if this is your first time joining us on the Danny Johnson show, especially on a Wednesday where we are, again, second hour of the show is all prayer. First hour is usually all teaching um, that's coming straight out of the best success book ever written, the Bible. If this is your first time, we do have a gift for you. It's called First Steps to Wealth. You want to grow in your career or start a business or grow the existing one you have. You want to get out of debt. You want to improve your relationships at home as well as at work. First Steps to Wealth, it's our free gift. If you're a first time listener on the Danny Johnson show, call this phone number, get your copy now, 866-760-8255. Again, that's 866-760-8255. You pay for the shipping to get the physical copy to your house, we'll pay for the $15 book. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow with another intriguing and awesome topic. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted.